All right, so we are continuing with our series on electrical drawing. Good. In this very video, I'm going to explain how to read and interpret an electrical drawing. All right, so this is the fifth video that I'm making in this series. And so if this is the first time you are watching, um, it will be good if you go back to watch the other videos that I posted earlier. I have shared all those videos at the description of this one. All right, so in the previous video, I said that usually electrical drawings are not done to show the detailed wiring. And so you are going to see the drawings as a plan or a layout diagram, not a wiring diagram. And so it is very essential that you know and understand how to decode and then interpret an electrical plan when you come across one. So here, I'm going to show different electrical plants, and then I will interpret and show what every part and every session in this drawing actually means. Okay, so here, I'll talk about this one first, and then I'll talk about other plants also. All right, so first of all, we have to know what everything in this wiring is representing or is standing for. Then, if we are able to know that, we can now make a meaning out of this plan. So let's start from the lines. Starting from the lines, the lines in an electrical plan represent the route or the path that the wires in the wiring take to connect to the various components. All right. So this is the path or the route that the wires would take to connect to all the components that are in the wiring. All right. And then the symbols here represent the components or the various items or accessories that we are connecting in the wiring. And so another important thing is that you should be able to identify what each symbol in the drawing represents or stands for. In the second video of this series, I explained what electrical symbols are, and I gave examples of most of the basic electrical symbols that are used in electrical drawing. But if you have not watched that video yet, I would suggest that you go back to have a look at that video so that you get an understanding of basic electrical symbols. This symbol represents a push button. So we are using it to represent the bell switch. And then this is an electric bell. Then the numbers that are used in this wiring indicate the number of wires that pass through each branch of the circuit. So we have a branch here. We have another branch here. We have another branch here, we have another branch here, and another branch here. So the seven here indicates that there are seven wires or seven cables that pass through this branch. And then the five here shows that there are five cables that are passing through this branch. And then the two here indicates that there are two wires that pass through this branch. All right, so now we understand what the numbers also represent. The next important thing we have to know and do is to identify or to know which cables are passing through here and where are they going to. All right, so quickly, as you can see here, we have a socket outlet here. And then because this is a socket outlet, we need three wires to connect to it. So three of these wires will pass through here, pass through here, pass through here, and then will come to connect to this socket outlet. So out of seven, we have three that are going to this socket. All right. So then the remaining four, where are they going? Good. So we know that we must have a feed supplied to this bell switch and then another feed supplied to this one gang switch 
here usually one feed can come here and then we loop that feed to this switch but in this drawing that is not what is showing here okay what is showing here means that we have one feed and then another wire to the bell so if the cables here are only two and we also have two here this simply means that we are taking two separate feeds from the consumer unit and so we'll have one feed come to the bell switch and then we have another feed to the switch so here two feed wires that will supply the bell and the light adding up to the three socket cables we now have five cables already now this is very important to know because we are using different feed for the bell and the switch these two circuits must be on their own so here we are creating a separate circuit for this and then a separate circuit for the light all right if we have a separate feed here there must be a separate neutral to the bell and then a separate neutral to the light so then in this plan we are going to have three separate circuits we have a circuit for the socket outlet we have another circuit for the bell and then we have another circuit for the light good and so two neutral wires in addition to the three socket wires and the two feed wires we have seven wires here so we are done with this place we are able to understand what wires add up to number seven here then we move to here here very simple we have a feed from board to the bell switch and then we have another wire that goes to operate the bell good here also we have two wires through this branch one of those wires is the feed from board and then a switch wire that goes to switch the lamps there are five wires here already the three wires that pass here to the socket will actually pass here so we have three we have another feed that will pass here to this switch four and then we have a neutral wire that will go to supply these two lamps and then a switch wire that switches the lamps all right so basically this is how to read an electrical plan and then know how the wiring is done in another way we could have a drawing that looks the same like this but the understanding and the implementation of that drawing can be different from the understanding and the implementation of this particular one so i'm going to use the same drawing but the wiring of that same drawing will be different from this one okay so as you can see from here you realize that this drawing is the same drawing we just talked about but here using this plan to do a wiring will be different from what we did previously okay what is the difference the difference is that some of the numbers have changed here all right so here we were having seven instead of seven wires we now have five here instead of two wires we now have three here instead of two we now have three why that in this case this simply shows that the three wires that will be coming here will have two feed wires and then one switch wire to the bell so there are so already there are three so already three of these five cables are coming to the socket then we have one that will come to the bell switch and then we loop from the bell switch to this one gang switch so here we have two feed wires the one that comes from board and the looped one to this switch and then another wire that goes to operate the bell the other wire here will be a neutral wire that will serve the bell and then we'll loop from here through here to the lamps 
So we we'll have two neutral wires here and then a switch wire. All right. So simply that is how to read an electrical plant. We'll have a look at other drawings and then see what they actually mean. So this is the second drawing we are going to look at. So here we have this symbol and then we have this one. I talked about all these symbols already in the second video of the series. You can find it under this video. So here we have this branch that connects from a consumer unit, 230 volt, 50 hertz. And then we have two wires passing through this branch. Here we have three wires. Here too we have three wires. Here we have three, 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 and then two, 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 two. two. All right. So what are the wires that pass here and where are they going to? Simply, if you observe this drawing carefully, you realize that this is a two gang switch. And then the three wires that pass here, we have one feed that comes here. And then we have two switch wires. Okay. There are two gangs. So one wire will connect to one gang. The other wire will connect to the second gang. And then one of the switch wires will supply the lamps here. And then one of them will also supply the lamps here. So you have one feed, two switch wires, making three wires here. When you come here, we have two switch wires and then a neutral wire. Okay. So probably there will be a junction box here where we take one neutral to this direction and then the other neutral to this direction. And then one of the switch wires will pass here and then the other switch wire will pass here. From the same junction box, we loop the switch wires and the neutral wires to the next lamps. We loop to the next lamps. We loop to the next lamps. Okay, so this is another way that a plan can be drawn. All right, so here we still have the lines and the symbols. Okay. So here we have 1.5 cables by two. So it means the size of the cable is 1.5 millimeters squared. And then we have two of them. Here we have three of 1.5. Here we have three of 1.5 and so on and so forth. Now, here, the two wires here, one is feed and then one is neutral. Here, the three wires here, one is feed, and then we have two strappers that connect to this. And then here also, we have the two strappers, and then we have a switch wire that goes to the lamp. All right, so there's another way that a plan can be drawn. And then the only thing here is that you have the number of cables and then the size of cable that is stated. All right, so basically, these are some of the ways that electrical plants can be presented and then how to read and understand them. But practically, most of these plants are rather drawn in building plants. So we have what we call the ground floor plan. And so mostly the electrical plan or the electrical drawing is done on the ground floor plan. Okay. So in reality, the electrical drawing is presented or is done on what we call the ground floor plan. So in the next video, I'll be showing how to read an electrical plan on a ground floor plan. So that is what we'll be doing next. We are going to look at how to read an electrical plan that is done on a ground floor plan. In case this is your first time of visiting my channel, I will encourage you to subscribe and stay connected. And anytime you watch my video and you like it, click on the like button and share with others. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video.